Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And this is episode 205, where I'm going to give you my top 12 drills for practicing your basics. Before we get into those, let's talk about something else. Me. <laughs> Just for a moment, though, my name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host here for the show. I'm also the founder at Whistlekick Sparring Gear and Apparel. You can check out all the great stuff we make at whistlekick.com. You can find the show notes for this episode, for the other 204 episodes at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. There's no punctuation in there, no, no hyphens, nothing like that. Just check out one of those sites. You can get to the other sites that we do from either of those. We've got some great stuff out there, martialartscalendar.com, all kinds of wonderful stuff, all to serve you as members of the martial arts community. And honestly, myself, because I'm one of you. <laughs> all right, here it is. My top 12 drills for practicing basics. Now, why do you want to practice basics? Basics are fundamental. I mean, just look at the term, the name, basics. They are basic. They're the thing that you start with when you start martial arts. They're also the place that a lot of intermediate and advanced martial artists tend to ignore. The best martial artists absolutely do not because it's what makes them the best. It's it's the foundation for what we do with everything, whether it's forms, whether it's sparring, whether it's breaking, it all comes back to your basics. We've done episodes on a lot of other elements of martial arts, drills for forms, stress, sparring, conditioning, developing your instincts. For some reason, this is the last one that we're doing. I mean, we'll, we'll do more, of course, but this one, maybe it should have been first, but for some reason, it didn't happen. Maybe because it's not really a sexy topic, but it's an important topic. And here we go with it. The key to basics isn't so much how to practice them. It's how to avoid getting bored with them. Because everybody listening, if I said, go practice your punches, go practice your kicks, you would know how to do that. You could do it all day. You could do it for hours, but you wouldn't want to. And when we start to practice things without intention, without energy, without any spirit behind it, not only does it not advance us, it can actually regress us. To practice your techniques poorly solidifies those motor patterns. It makes you really good at doing your techniques poorly. Here are those 12 drills. Number one, you can do your basics stationary. Most of us have done this. Standing in a particular stance, whether that's a ready stance or a front stance or a fighting stance, and picking a movement and working on it. I don't need to tell you more about that, right? You know how to do that. But it's still important. It's still something we need to revisit from time to time. We can practice our techniques moving. All of your stances. I don't care what technique it is. You can throw it from any stance. Is it necessarily going to be advantageous to throw it from that stance? No. Is it something you're going to use in a sparring or self-defense situation? Not necessarily. Probably not. But, and I underscore this, why is that important? Because it gives you a better understanding of the technique. Each technique has advantages and disadvantages. You probably know that, whether you've thought about it consciously or not. But the more different ways you practice it, the more you get to understand the personality of that technique and how it relates to you and your body and where you would and would not use it. Have you ever tried to throw a back kick while you're in a back stance and moving sideways? It's hard, but try it. It'll teach you something about a back kick. It'll teach you something about a back stance. Maybe even teach you something about your balance. Number three, practice them with your eyes closed. It is amazing to watch a room full of martial artists that have very little experience throwing their techniques with their eyes closed, doing them. All of a sudden, their idea of where their punch is supposed to go or what solar plexus height on a kick looks like goes out the window. And if that happens, there's a good thing to practice there. With this one, you might need somebody to spot you, to watch you, or you can video yourself. Number four, in a mirror, kind of the exact opposite of your eyes closed. It's you watching yourself in real time. A lot of people get uncomfortable in front of a mirror. Those are the people that really need to do it. When we're in front of a mirror, we can't hide anything. And it's really I don't want to say easy, but we get to see the correlation between the way our body feels and how the techniques come out. Number five, 
throw your techniques at a target. Whether that's somebody holding something or maybe you mount something on, on the wall or even just a piece of tape on the wall, something that you can strike at. The better you get, the smaller the target should get. Number six, you can strike for power on a bag. Stand in front of a heavy bag and throw 10 reverse punches as hard as you can. You probably won't want to throw an 11th. It takes a lot of work. There's a lot of energy being expended there. And you start to understand not just how to move that arm, but how to rotate for that power. And the same can be said of any of your techniques. When you're throwing for power, you start to understand what the rest of the body has to do to make it happen, to make that technique powerful. Number seven, for speed. Just last week on episode 203, did a whole set of drills on developing better speed with your techniques. You can practice any one of the techniques that you know with any one of those drills. Lots to work on there. Number eight, a moving target. And this can be a lot of fun. Someone can throw something or, or you can even toss something up in the air. Small beanbag, for example, works really well. Throw that, that up in the air and, and the obvious technique might be to throw a punch or maybe a back fist or maybe a front kick. But what about you throw it up in the air and then you're trying to do a spinning technique? Or what if you throw two and try to strike two? It can get complicated. And complicated means you're not bored. Not being bored means you're working on your basics more. Number nine, as part of a cardio workout, here's a great example. Do five rounds of 10 burpees and 20 punches out of a horse stance. It's 50 burpees, it's 100 punches. Not too much, manageable, but you're going to be pretty tired. You're going to be working really hard to maintain that horse stance, to throw those punches with any kind of quality because you're tired from the burpees. Number 10, throw them incredibly slowly. I'm not saying it has to be with tension. And for those of you that know Sun Chin, that, that's what I'm referencing. You could do it that way, but you can also do it without that tension. Throwing a technique very slowly. And when I say very slowly, I mean, you know, 10, 15, 30 seconds between starting the technique and finishing it. That's going to teach you a lot about the muscles that are involved in executing that technique, the balance that's required, what's going on in your legs for that punch, what's going on with your upper body for that kick. The more you understand how that technique works and works with your body, the better you can do with it. Number 11, with visualizations. And here's what I mean, two of my favorites. First, I imagine that I'm striking someone. And that my te technique is so powerful that it goes through their body. It's kind of a, a great kind of video game, movie-esque imagery, right? The other one is I imagine that I'm actually in a video game and that I'm expelling some kind of energy burst out of the end of my hand or my foot. I do these in class. Nobody has to know. If we're doing basics up and down the floor, which... Let's face it, if you've been training for a long time, that's not necessarily the most fun format for you. But here's a great way to practice in a, in a sense that is much more entertaining. And to maintain that focus of that visualization while you're doing other things with other people around you, there's something else that you're training at the same time. And our last one, number 12. This one is probably going to sound weird because it kind of is, but I think you might dig it. Practice your basics in your forms, but you only get to pick one technique. And that's the only one you do. Here's an example. Let's say you're doing a form that has several different hand techniques, you know, a number of blocks and punches, ridge hands, back fists. Well, every time you throw a hand technique, it's going to be the same move. Uh, let's say a back fist. You go through that whole form and any time your hands move, it's a back fist. You can still kick, you can still have your stances and, and transition footwork. But if it involves your hand, it's a back fist or some part of a back fist. You're going to learn new ways to use that back fist or whatever technique you choose. You can do the same thing with your feet, of course. Every time your feet move, it's the same kick. Even if there isn't a kick there, throw a kick there. 
It's going to be weird. It's not going to be anywhere close to the same form, but it's a different format. You may learn something about the form that you're you're doing too. Oh, maybe that's what is going on in this this form. You know, maybe there's some uh, some practical application, some bunkai for your karate practitioners in there. There it is, top twelve. If you missed any of those, we'll post them in the show notes over at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. But this is a fairly short episode. You can go back, roll it back, listen to my voice again. If you have others that you want to offer up as examples, shoot them over to me, jeremy at whistlekick.com, or find us on social media. We're at whistlekick pretty much everywhere. I want to thank you for listening. As always, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you sharing these episodes with others. The show continues to grow, and that makes me really happy because it means that the stuff that I'm putting out resonates for all of you. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.